June 14th. Hello, Don in London. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol. My behaviour, equally addictive, under the influence of alcohol. To try to be perfect, be with the right people in the right place, doing the right things, and having the right things. A big pile of wants, and often disappointed by life, or the life I was leading. Because I think now, or I feel now, I was probably following a path because I didn't know any other and the way to get over myself and get over the things I used to do I drank to oblivion so these days I don't and uh, more able to make free choices today about what is good for me and what is not good for me and to exercise freedom of choice about what I do freedom so what's helped me well family friends community kept me alive long enough to get a moment of clarity where I, I said to myself I cannot do this on my own I cannot beat alcohol and I'm not too far from dying from it and a lot of bravado along the way a lot of hospital visits some time in intensive care and mocking the treatment which was keeping me alive by going out and drinking again because I couldn't stop no matter what the addiction had got me and I was out of control and the addiction was in control of me. So what happened? Well, having asked for help, I got some help, medical, professional, psychological, and they all said go to AA, which is Alcoholics Anonymous. So whilst I share about what AA does for me, I can never speak for the fellowship, simply because the fellowship is unique, authentic people leading their lives today as they choose. And they are unique and authentic, and I don't want to speak for them ever nor do I speak for the fellowship as a whole either never can never will indeed if I were to speak as if I were a fellowship in my own right that would be quite egotistical and wrong because I don't know what is right for you I just don't it's simple as that so each day is different and uh, the fellowship has taught me 12 steps as a toolkit to live life to practice 12 steps in my living and it doesn't mean it's hard work it means it's it makes life easy it makes life possible it makes life fun when it can be fun and it also helps me understand the sound of life the dark side of life the things I used to cover up or push away because they were just unacceptable truths like death like people leaving my life all that stuff so I don't have to drink on that anymore. I can be upset about life when life is upsetting and also be happy when life is happy. So my videos over the years reflect this and uh, on one or two occasions I do trample on the toes of other people who have ideas that there are laws, regulations and rule, rules to obey. I'll just shut down my email for the moment. And I think it's going to happen because we all have our own views on how recovery works for each of us and if I've been able to follow the rules or suggestions rather there are no rules if I'd follow the suggestions of AA straight off from day one I'd have been sober a lot sooner but I didn't because I was rebellious, arrogant, egotistical because I knew better intellectually I knew better but emotionally I hadn't got a clue so why? why this diverse part of the program we all are intelligent in our own right and we all have feelings but so often in life we use our intellect it ought to be this way it should be this way it could be this way if only I did so we're full of intellectual expectations about what we can do but when I get down to the emotional level of what is right for me what feels right it took me a long time to understand I had any feelings at all because they've been sub submerged and suppressed for so long and many people often say I don't know how I'm feeling so what are you on about well these days I do practice something which is how am I feeling why and what can I do when I know why, why, how I feel about a situation good bad indifferent happy sad in love out of love wish it was different attracted to not attracted to I start to understand my feelings on a daily basis so part of my regime in the morning is asking myself how am I feeling about 
the fact that I'm sober, the fact that I have type 1 diabetes, the fact that I have cl clinical depression, and these are all chronic conditions, the fact that I need to follow professional medical advice to stay well, the fact that I'm in a fellowship, all those things, how do I feel about them? I feel good that I know what is going on. And the reason I'm sharing this is because these steps of fellowship, the 12 steps of fellowship, help me be an individual, unique, authentic, with freedom. And uh, somebody asked, asked me, help me please, because of this, this and this. And I'd just like to share what I wrote back. And it starts, hello my friend, but that's their name there instead of my friend. Good to hear from you. In your shoes, I would want to know from medical people your current physical situation to cover the medical angle. Then I would follow their advice, because for so many years I just didn't follow the medical advice that was given to me about what was going on. Second, I would ask for a psychological evaluation to understand the key issues as, as you see them. And the reason for that is, any medical condition which is chronic impacts on our emotions and our psychological understanding of life, which can be regret, resentment at first, and even denial there's anything wrong with the way we are today. Third, I would review how the STEP program can integrate into a daily regime, taking account of your overall needs for support. So medical, psychological, fellowship, they all work as an integrated whole. Fellowship doesn't work separate to real life. Fellowship is about real life. I know you have a high intellect and can see solutions. At the same time, you are unforgiving towards yourself and may be always impatient as your emotional and physical recovery is taking more time than you would wish. The spiritual element in all this is bringing ourselves back into the moment where we can see what we can do and what we can't do daily. So spiritual, the spiritual angle is realism, seeing life in life's terms. So when anybody ever says, oh my God, followed by a statement of surprise, it can be a happy or sad surprise, or just shock. And apparently, you know, if we are to understand God in any way, and it will always be a personal understanding, there's only way, one place that God can exist, now, timelessly because time is an invention of humans in terms of starting and ending. I know you have a high intellect and can see solutions, yes, and still be unforgiving. So what we can and cannot do daily. The steps are marvellous to help us see our situation, what we can and cannot do. And with high expectations and frustration and being intellectually gifted, we not only resent ourselves, we become highly critical and intolerant of those who might be trying to help us, especially family, and that was me. I couldn't help myself, and my family tried to help me, and I got very re resentful about it. But I don't these days, because they do it with love, even when it won't work for me, and I can't make it work. I would keep seeking professional consultations together with counselling support to deal with inner turmoil, and utilise the steps to keep it in the day because the 12-step program only works in the, in the now, if we practice them. I, I personally, and this is me, have three distinct chronic medical conditions, and the path these days is limited to the possible, and being realistic day to day. Tolerance of my incapacities can escape me when I isolate or try achieving the impossible, to be as I was before. Be gentle with yourself today is the best advice I can give. So that if we know exactly what is going on for us and follow the professional medical as well as fellowship suggestions, we can deal with each day as it comes. And that is the spiritual angle, living life on life's terms, the ability to cope with now. What gets in the way, and it's June, and it's all about step six for me, which is about defects of character. Intolerance of myself, impatience with myself, thinking my solutions rather than living them, thinking it ought to be okay to do these things without actually saying, 
how do I feel about trying to do this and is it possible can I do it or can't I do it and it's not set settling for second best it's saying realistically what's the limit and how far can I push myself against that and seek advice from others God works through others they say and maybe I say too but you see that's my personal opinion and the God question is always a personal understanding so whether it's a higher power or not in your life good conscience is a higher power the good conscience that we all have which is not twisted unless we let it be twisted by insulated thinking where we think it's all about me so anyway that's some of that and one or two of the other things I'll be putting out today choices made with truth and not denial June is all about step six defects of character when I make choices from extremes of fear putting on a brave face and little confidence denial of truth is highly likely today if I pause deal with I can't believe it moment or oh my god what's going on get help and respond truth prevails denials fade so it's very good to say oh my god what's going on I can't believe it because that's the denial bit ok let's get to the real situation so I think often when people say oh my god whether they believe in God or not or just have a sense of great good in good conscience what the heck is going on here something is going on at a higher level which implores us to seek help please so and then part of the uh, daily reflections when the going gets rough yeah my part of that when the going gets rough unity service and recovery life happens and we are part of it good or bad sad or joyful and often all mixed up together life in real time experienced in real time rather than thinking I ought to be doing this now which is a future thing or it used to be good but why is it so bloody hard now is wisdom developing real time Rela rarely do we control it we always learn living now so if I remember step one powerless over people places and things but I have freedom around that freedom of choice to be included in something or not I'm making progress but if I say to myself regardless of anything I'm going to make it work I'm not being realistic because I haven't even done any simple project planning like who's going to be included and have I spoken to them yet or what do they think about it am I a part of and included or am I trying to ro railroad people and run roughshod over them so these are the things I learn day by day reality where life works can do can't do or denial of reality and uh, I've had a reply on the question of anonymity in tradition 11 and I've been quoted a passage from one of the texts which talks about what is anonymity and why is it so important well for me anonymity is sacrosanct for people to find the truth of who they are so anonymity in meetings and groups of AA is sacrosanct to find the truth of who we are and the danger of any person outside of that going it alone and saying this is what AA does and promotes it is really unhelpful because AA can't do anything until you start doing something and that's living sober so I don't promote AA as a catch-all and the only way in fact the co-founder said AA is not the only way and how we conduct ourselves in society and at whatever level we operate or simply as an ordinary human being sharing experience, strength and hope it remains always a personal choice and the suggestion is judge not because if you're judging you're doing what God is there to do that is the collective wisdom that is on the planet timeless and in the moment of now so however we communicate and it's about recovery experience strength and hope and we don't promote it as the only way and we don't promote it as our way is the only way I see no harm if we help another alcoholic I do see the harm if people then say I've got the best idea and I'm going to slap my logo, logo on it and it's all down to AA 
well that would be wrong you know we learn in fellowship what we see is what we get face to face good and bad right and wrong that's how we learn but the most important thing is we're open honest and willing to keep on trying and be sober and make the best of what is enough of me what follows daily reflections over the years and also chapter 6 the step in the 12 and 12 all about step 6 removal of defects and all I know is if I ask myself work on your defects today Donald you've got a chance of working to the positive of life and knowing that denial fear, brave facing, ego and the seven deadly sins are always going to be there but there are seven virtues and imbalance of all of this and it's a personal learning journey a personal learning journey based on what we know so far and what I know is the fellowship tools work for me but I don't promote them for you because they may not work but there are other ways as well it has to be freedom of choice no laws, no rules, no regulations but working to good conscience and the laws of a society always apply and community and what is developing and evolving that's how it works not being stuck one way enough and the serenity prayer is said over and over about three times following this so I shan't say it here but that serenity prayer is all about can do, can't do wisdom and learning Don in London, hello my daily video all about daily reflections to do with recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour my addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive to extremes I'm trying to fix myself and it never ever pro was prolonged or worked it was at extremes of behaviour fixed but not necessarily happy so these days aiming for happiness on a daily basis I share daily reflections from this book from AA Alcoholics Anonymous this is just one voice you need to hear the voice of many in order to get a balanced view of what it's like to be in recovery and fellowship offers, offers that opportunity on a daily basis wherever we are so for June 14th when the, the going gets tough this is the reading it is a design for living that works in rough going when I came to AA I realized that AA worked wonderfully to help keep me sober but, it, but could it work on real life on, on real life problems not concerned with drinking I had my doubts after being sober for more than two years I got my answer I lost my job, developed physical problems my diabetic father lost a leg and someone I lo loved left me for another and all this happened during a two week period how is it that it always happens all at once? reality crashed in, yet AA was there to support, comfort and strengthen me the principles I had learned during my early years of sobriety became a mainstay of my life for not only did I come to through but I never stopped being able to help newcomers AA taught me not to be overwhelmed but rather to accept and understand my life as it unfolded so when the going gets tough it's reality and we can feel and experience those extremes and when we're feeling those extremes we can be reactive with our old behaviour or we can be responsive with new behaviour which is to be open, honest and willing to change and meet what is going on and the serenity prayer helps me at any moment during the day to remind me of how to do this so to God or good conscience grant me the serenity to, under to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today I'm in London, hello, it's June 14th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from either recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. I nearly forgot what I was here for or what I'm trying to do. Yeah, what am I trying to do? Well, share about recovery, just recovery one day at a time, how to stay away from 
whatever the addictive substance may be. Uh, if mine was alcohol, it was fairly easy. Don't go in pubs, don't go in bars, don't go to supermarkets, don't walk down the street, you name it, don't do it. And of course, it's not about not doing something or forcing ourselves with obsessive willpower or self-will to stop anything to do with addiction. It's actually acknowledging what we've got. That's the admission to oneself and probably to those around us that we're better off not doing the harmful stuff where we've got addicted to something which is not good for us. So the most obvious is alcohol, drugs, and uh, those are the substances. And then the behavior which goes with them, uh, I think any human can develop addictive, self-obsessive behaviors if life is not treating them too well. So fear comes into this a lot for me, fear of living, fear of dying, fear of what might happen tomorrow, fear of what has gone before, and what will people think of me. And uh, one of the, the biggest problems we face in recovery is to get over the prejudice we have against ourselves. It's about gu guilt and shame and consequences. So during our drinking times where we were out of control, or certainly taking the edge off and feeling different because of it, we may have done things which were probably unacceptable to our own ethical code and probably unacceptable to other people's ethical code as well. But of course you have to have an ethical code in the first place before you can actually come to a place of I need to change for the better or for the good of me and the people around me. And the problem with any addiction is it sneaks up quite stealthily and leaves us in a funny place of not being able to stop. And the first person to say I've got to stop doing it is the person who's doing it and the first person to try and hide it away is the person who's doing it. So we hide ourselves and we hide the truth from ourselves for a long time. And maybe we are in ignorance because we live in a big drinking culture and whilst other people are getting away with it, are they? I don't know. Not my concern. I wasn't getting away with it because it was taking away my life or the life I could have with a more sober head. And uh, where would I be without family? Where would I be without community? Where would I be without people who have gone through this sort of thing before? And uh, a lot of people knock the fellowship I go to, which is perfectly okay. I go to AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, and I can, I can share my experience, strength and hope here, but I can't share anybody else's. I can share in a general way, but I can't be specific about anything to do with the inner workings of the AA fellowship. And that's not about being secret, certainly not secret from my point of view, because I go there and get some wisdom. What it's about, the anon anonymous bit, it falls into two categories for me. Anonymity is the opportunity to find our truth, to express ourselves as best we can with what has happened and what we may do about it. And the second part of anonymity for me is a lot of people feel it is the spiritual foundation upon which the fellowship is founded. And for me, uh, I take the view that truth is my spiritual foundation. Anonymity affords me the luxury to find out what the truth is by allowing me to express my truth in a safe place. So whether we have one view or another, the most important thing is AA is full of unique, authentic people, which I don't speak for, and AA need not speak for itself, because why should it? It's simply a fellowship, and uh, for those who want it to be an organisation so you can complain, uh, there is no customer service department. The only customer service department is in your own head. So if we get the message that drinking is not so good for us, and we have an allergy to it where it takes us to extremes where we cannot control our own behaviour, and probably invite other people to join in as well, either to stop us from what we're doing, or to try and help us stop us from what we're doing. And the problem is, the person in addiction needs to acknowledge and accept it. And that can take an awful long time, because we're in ignorance around our drinking, because we think everybody else is doing the same thing as us. And it comes as a bit of a surprise when they're not, or they, we are told it's unacceptable. I'm going on a bit, and uh, I haven't even got around to the preamble of AA. Uh, this is a thing which keeps me coming back. And it, this is said at the beginning of every meeting, it goes like this. AA, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution, and it's certainly not allied with my videos, and I wouldn't want them to be. 
neither endorses nor opposes any causes or my videos. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So inside the fellowship we, um, we have the sanctuary to find out who we are. And then outside the fellowship we can again find out who we are in reality with what is going on around us. And when I can't get to meetings I share, uh, I read the books of uh, As Bill Sees It, one day, uh, one page a day, a little bit of reading, and the daily reflections which is designed to be one page a day. As Bill sees it, read as many as it, as it hurts to actually get the message. Uh, sober is better. Well, better for me. I can't speak for anybody else. Why should I? And uh, in the daily reflections, <coughs> there's a 12-step action program, and each, each step is covered in each month. So June's all about um, defects of character, or, uh, as I like to say, areas of development, which are going to be ongoing. Uh, I cannot remove the, the, the seven vices from my head as much as I can remove the seven virtues from my head. But with a clear head, I can understand the difference. And in step six, it's all about vice, really, and then things out of proportion. So on June 14th, it says here, when the going gets tough, this is from the Daily Reflections, it is a design for living that works in rough going. And that's about the program of AA. When I came to AA, I realized that AA worked wonderfully to help keep me sober but could it work on real life problems? Not concerned with drinking, I had my doubts. After being sober for more than two years, I got my answer. I lost my job, developed physical problems, my diabetic father lost a leg, and someone I loved left me for another. Not too far from my story. I got di type 1 diabetes, not through lifestyle, just by having a virus. And uh, I don't know how many of my female partners have left me. They did the right thing. Yes, and all this happened during a two-week period. Well, that happened over 20 years, actually, so a bit slow getting there. Um, reality crashed in, yet, in, yet AA was there to support, comfort and strengthen me. The principles I had learned during my early days of sobriety became the mainstay of my life, for not only did I become, come through, but I never stopped being able to help newcomers, and other people, of course. AA taught me not to be overwhelmed, but rather to accept and understand my life as it unfolded. <coughs> and what a gift, you know, to actually start to see life unfolding and some of the hor horrible things that happen. I mean, I don't actually view type 1 diabetes as the end of the world. And, uh, you know, if I got it when I was out there actively drinking, I'd be dead. Or rather, I wouldn't have got it because I wouldn't have got the infection and the virus, probably. And I wouldn't have had a tooth out. So, life is just a bit weird, isn't it? And uh, if we can accept it and learn to work and operate differently and live differently, then we've got a fighting chance. Now, in this one, as Bill sees it, uh, for, the, for today it says, admitted to God. Or well, God is truth, love, God works through people, God is good conscience, whatever it is for you. You can be an atheist, agnostic, or a believer in a higher power. What I found is I can be all of those things depending on my life circumstances. So here it goes admitted to God. Provided you hold back nothing in taking the fifth step, which is where we sort it all out and share it, your sense of relief will mount from minute to minute. The damned up emotions of years break out of their confinement and miraculously vanish as soon as they are exposed. As the dam subsides, a healing tranquility takes place, and, and when humility and serenity are, co are so combined, something else of great moment is apt to occur. Like the end of my video. Many in AA, once an agnostic or atheist, tells us that it was during step five that he first actually felt the presence of God, or good conscience, or a higher power, or a bit of guidance from everybody. And even those who had already, already had faith often became conscious of God, became, often become conscious of God as they never did before. I don't know, and that's okay because I'm just learning. So when I say the serenity prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference it simply is one day whether I'm in scientific mode emotional mode or spiritual mode more and on and it's uh, June 14th 2008 Saturday morning and uh, Saturday mornings for me includes going to a meeting of AA, that's Alcoholics Anonymous. <coughs> and the meeting I'm going to today is in the hut 
down the King's Road, down Flood Street, round the corner in the Alpha Place, and it's a quarter to twelve to quarter to one, and it's quite a good meeting actually, and uh, lots of people go, just ordinary folks, as we say, people who are in recovery from drink, and we have a good natter and a good laugh, and I make tea at this meeting at the moment, which is uh, my way of doing a bit of service and I've got two service commitments that at, at present each week. One is to be a treasurer of one meeting and tea maker at, at another. And I think it's good that there is a balance between the two. And when I go to other meetings, there's always vacancies for service. And that's like tea maker, treasurer, uh, secretary, group service rep representative to uh, the hierarchy of AA, which is in fact a very flat structure and has no power whatsoever because each group is autonomous. And that's the gift of AA. Nobody really has the authority to tell another AA person what to do. And I like that because it means I make my choices as I go and learn how to be in recovery. And everybody has their own choices about recovery and how to do it. And we have a simple program, which is 12 steps uh, of change. And, and that involves a change in attitude and behavior. And we also have 12 traditions which hold the fellowship together. A fellowship which is not an organization we are organized to run meetings and to get sober but that's as far as it goes it's a fellowship of people who just turn up a day at a time so there's nothing big and bad about AA and a lot of people would like it to be an organization which fi fixes people and this is the big dilemma for many people who come to AA that they want to be sorted and if they're not sorted they want someone to complain at and the problem is with a fellowship which is just people ordinary people making life work a day at a time we are only good for a day and that's the the beauty of the f fellowship and also maybe the the thing which makes people angry because it can't fix it can't fix a thing we have to do it ourselves so it's a bit of a do-it-yourself job and uh, I suppose that comes under the banner of self-love as well because if we love ourselves enough to make the effort then we learn how to love other people as well so it's a very very difficult it's a very very difficult thing to find sobriety if dependent on al alcohol in any way. We don't want to give it up. It feels like our best friend. And we're stuck. We're stuck in this dilemma. How to make life work? Well, I do on a daily basis. If I try and plan too far ahead, it can go awfully wonky and wrong. Hmm. So what is AA? <coughs> Here's the fellowship preamble. I said at every meeting. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And, you know, how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. We talk about our experience, strength and hope mostly, and the steps of AA. And June is all about step six, which is about defects of character, having them removed. And what I found is that defects of character, or the liabilities sometimes around fear, putting on a brave face and ego for me, can completely undermine my courage, faith and confidence. And those are my assets. I'm not maybe doing enough of that on a daily basis. Because by the time we get to AA, we're pretty much beaten down people. Maybe we still have a bit of ego left, but often we neither have ego nor self-esteem. And we're in a sort of limbo land, which is torture and very fearful. So, and it's depression. And uh, some of us have clinical depression as a part of what we have to cope with. And some of us get reactive depressions, which is a reaction to situations, places, things, people. So, we're never quite sure what's going on, but we can probably make the best of each day if we know what our choices are. So that's why the serenity prayer comes in so handy, which is, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And we only get to know what the difference is on a daily basis in the moment, and the moment is the connection to spiritual living. Spiritual living is seeing life as it is, no denials, no filters, but we, we still have our opinions, our judgments, which will filter out sometimes the truth, and we're looking for open, honest, willing, and being truthful. All good ideals, and uh, we make progress and never perfect, and 
and uh, you know that's just the way of the fellowship. Coming on to the readings for today, and apologies for yesterday, it was, Feb it was Friday the 13th. It wasn't that anything went wrong with that, my computer, my day was just packed with things to do, to do with self-maintenance and helping others. So, you know, sometimes I, I, maybe I can't do a video on a daily basis, and I shouldn't beat myself up for it. And uh, that's the way it is. But this book, Daily Reflections, for June 14th, it says, when the going gets rough. It is a design for living that works in rough going, Alcoholics Anonymous. When I came to AA, I realized that AA worked wonderfully to keep, help to help keep me sober, but could it work on real life problems? Not concerned with drinking, I had my doubts. After being sober for more than two years, I got my answer. I lost my first job. I lost my job, developed physical problems, and my diabetic father lost a leg, and someone I loved left me for another. All of this happened during a two week period. Reality crashed in, yet AA was there to support, comfort, and strengthen me. The principles I'd learned during my early days of sobriety became a mainstay of my life, for not only did I become did I come through, but I never stopped being able to help newcomers. AA taught me not to be overwhelmed, but rather to accept and understand my life as it unfolded. And I know when I, uh, my father died, and my partner had to leave me, she had to leave me, there's no doubt about it, we would end up, ended up uh, leaning on each other for decades I suspect and that's what she said and she was right but it took me a couple of decades to realize it now how slow am I and uh, you know in sobriety I got type 1 diabetes uh, I haven't lost a leg yet and I don't think I will I keep cycling everywhere trying to keep my circulation going and I deal with the pain of neuropathy as best I can so we have big things happen in sobriety to the good and bad and serenity is not necessarily all serene and wonderful. Serenity comes from knowing the difference and being able to sort out the good and the bad as we go. As Bill sees it, I like this book. It's got uh, lots of bits of wisdom and why not share it? So page 169, it says, Learning never ends. My experience as an old timer has to some degree paralleled your own and that of many others. We all find the time that the time comes when we are not allowed to manage and conduct the functional affairs of groups, areas, or in my case, AA as a whole. In the end, we can only be worth as much as our spiritual example has justified. To that extent, we become useful symbols, and that's just about it. I have, never, I, I have become pupil, a pupil of, of the AA movement rather than the teacher I once thought I was. And you know, that's so true, because we just share experience, strength and hope, and we are pupils, we're pupils of life, students of life, always learning, and it never ends. And if we're lucky, our attitudes and behavior keeps constantly being renewed incrementally, so we can get by and get on. And the 24-hour day book, which is this one, not authorized by AA, but written by an AA person, so it's one person's viewpoint, same as me, uh, take the good and leave the rest. June 14. In AA, we have to learn that drink is our greatest enemy. Although we used to think that liquor was our friend, the time came when it turned against us and became our enemy. We don't know just when this happened, but we know that it did because we get, began to get into trouble, jails and hospitals. We realize now that liquor is our enemy. Is it still my main business to keep sober? Absolutely. And do it gently. And you know, sometimes I need a bit of a thump on the head to remind me that I'm just a human being and I'm not a not an autonomous automaton trying to just do things for the sake of it. And doing the right thing on a daily basis is learning in the day what that right thing is. So you can't say one day is ever going to be the same as another. In fact, it would be quite boring if it was. And there is no dogma really, other than that first thing don't take a drink, get to meetings, and that's a bit dogmatic. But in reality, there's nobody in AA to tell you what to do. The choices are ours as we go. And I think that is the gift. And sometimes when we have a sponsor who can be a grumpy old git, which he is sometimes, you still love him and know that he needs as much support as we do. And that's important too. So I'll give him a ring later. Meanwhile, my time is up, and uh, I hope you all have a good day. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. 
my addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time and that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment, find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life, everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship. That fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone, I guess, of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. So there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June for me is all about step six. So I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. 
and the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the the poem an epic poem written by Prudentius circa 410 AD an epic poem written practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth so very black and white you're either one or the other but in real life what are we we're all of those things at different times in our lives and although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned we all have some sort of traits around those issues and the 12 steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it in step 6 and step 7 so step 6 is all about my defects of character and step 7 is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so step six in the fellowship program reads as this with a bit of commentary from me and don't forget this is just a personal understanding it's your understanding in the end which counts and where do you get your personal understanding from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough so we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character this is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls so de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again don't get hung up on creator it's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this the common good often is used or utilized of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member to him this proposition will be no theory at all it will be just about the largest fact in his life he will usually offer his proof in a statement like this sure I was beaten absolutely licked my own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene the best efforts of family friends doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism I simply couldn't stop drinking and no human being could seem to do the job for me but when I became willing to clean house that's step four and then asked a, a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished he was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people 
and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personal attitude traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose, and that's to do with our thinking. And, and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render as, com as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our de instincts and drives and desires were out of control, as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail we, we would be back on pride and self-will 
The keywords entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover, to our dismay, that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say? so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds. And even whilst staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. and. Uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it, because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. 
else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not rather than working for it or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it and how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on only we call it only we call that retiring consider too our talents for procrastination which is really sloth in five syllables nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these and few of us would, be, would seriously think of giving them up at least until they cause us excessive misery and without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people of course may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left it is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection we know that some delay however might be pardoned that word in the mind of a rationalizing alcoholic 
could, con could certainly be given a long term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure I'll head towards perfection but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others. The moment we say no never our minds close against the grace of God or common sense. After all, what else would God's words be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because you know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often. That life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today? How do I want to behave? How do I want to be open, honest and willing to change my attitude and behaviour to fit my circumstances? And do my feelings fit my life right now? If we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? And if I feel okay, given my current situation, my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or well, my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated. I need to, to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now, why? because I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence 
and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today